How did you hear about the ocarina? Think about that question, because for most Americans at least, the answer would be Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time from 1998. But you might have also heard of the ocarina from My Neighbor Totoro in 1988, Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past from 1991, or Dragon Ball Z, Wrath of the Dragon from 1995. What do these things all have in common? One, they're produced in Japan. Two, they're produced in Japan during the 1980s and 90s. Three, they're not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel. <laughs> we can gather that at some point leading up to the creation of these pieces of media, ocarinas became popular in Japan. And you hit that subscribe button. I have spent a considerable amount of time in Japan, and every time I've gone, I've brought one or more ocarinas with me. Whenever I've played my ocarinas, and whenever I've talked to people about my ocarinas, 98% of the time, people have known what an ocarina is, compared to maybe 10 to 15% of the time in the United States. In America, I'm lucky to hear, oh, the Zelda thing? But why is that? Why was there a sudden interest in ocarinas in Japan? It all stems back to one documentary from 1986. In 1986, the NHK or Nippon Hoso Kyokai, also known as Japan Broadcasting Company, produced a documentary called Daikouga, also known as The Great Yellow River, about a river in China of the same name. The documentary itself isn't what caused the stir. It was the soundtrack by Nomura Sojiro, though, like Beyonce, we only need to refer to him as Sojiro. Pretty much the entire soundtrack featured Sojiro and his ocarina playing, and because NHK documentaries are broadcast to more or less the entire nation of Japan, a huge portion of Japan's population was, in turn, exposed to ocarinas. This led to an ocarina boom all across the country. Hi, Momo. He wants to be on the desk, but there's no space for him on the desk. And if I pick him up, he complains. I can't win. Eh, Why am I so stupid? For copyright purposes, I will not play the soundtrack in this video, but the Great Yellow River soundtrack is available on Spotify and other streaming platforms. Though on Spotify, everything is in Japanese, so I will have a link in the description if you want to listen to it. And I really, really do highly recommend that you listen to it. You will see why an entire nation fell in love with the ocarina. Now, back to Sojiro. According to his website, Sojiro grew up in Tatebayashi City in Gunma Prefecture. He discovered the ocarina at the age of 21 in 1975. He, in a 10-year span, learned to make the ocarina and made over 10,000 instruments. And from those instruments he made, he still uses 10 to this day. He built his own kiln, he sourced different varieties of clay from different regions, and he constantly experimented to make the best instrument possible for himself. Look up Sojiro Ocarina, or just check the link in the description to find his website. There's so much poetry and love for how his relationship with the ocarina is described. I'll read a quote. This sound of the ocarina convinced Sojiro, who loved songs and in fact wanted to sing, that the lyrics were not necessary. It is the sound of the earth. There is no need for words. My instruments are voice and ocarina. It's hard to describe, but something that drew me to the ocarina was a very vocal-esque quality to the instrument. A 12-hole ocarina has roughly the same range as the average person's voice. And there are so many ways to express yourself while playing the ocarina, just like with singing. Anyways, thanks to Sojiro popularizing the ocarina in Japan, it made its way in a kind of circuitous route to the West. While the ocarina was popular in the United States in the early 1900s, it was eventually forgotten. However, 
With the introduction of Japanese media such as Legend of Zelda, the ocarina was successfully reintroduced in the United States and other Western countries. If you play the ocarina, and if you love the Legend of Zelda, the Ocarina of Time, you have Sojiro to thank. It's because of his 10 years of hard work making ocarinas and mastering playing them, and eventually being featured in the Great Yellow River documentary that we have an ocarina community today. So, thank you, Sojiro. That's it for the history, but do leave a like if you want more ocarina history. But I got a fun story. It's summer 2019. I'm wrapping up an internship in Kyoto, and I'm talking with my host family about my plans for solo travel afterward. I'm talking with my host family, who wasn't the main host family I was staying with, but I got sick, and they were taking care of me while I was sick. It's complicated. But anyways, I mentioned I was going to Nagano for a week. The next morning, they hand me a printout. And on that printout is details for a Sojiro concert. And the ocarina player in me just like can't believe that this is that, that th this is happening. I might be going to see Sojiro live like holy guacamole. So I rush to my computer. I, I go on Google Maps. I see like, okay, how long does it take to get from my hostel in Nagano to uh, Matsumoto, the, the city in Nagano prefecture where this concert is happening? I, I, I check the route and it's like, it's like a two hour trip. So I think this is possible. I can do this. I can make a day trip of seeing Sojiro. This will be awesome. Oh my God. And then I check the flyer again and I see really disheartening news. The concert is um, well after I've left Nagano. So I thank my host family for showing me, but I die a little bit inside because there's no way I could get from Tokyo to, Na to uh, Matsumoto at, an, at, a, at a price I can afford. The only reason I was going to Nagano was because I had an unlimited JR Rail Pass, which allows you to just, just travel as much as you want for a very low price. It's great. However, I did go to an ocarina concert in Tokyo with some prominent players. That concert was hosted by Tom Van Oppen. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but his channel's linked below. And it featured a bunch of extremely noteworthy Japanese and Italian players. The thing is, um, I didn't get all the details necessary to go to the concert, and Tom wasn't replying to my messages because he was busy setting up the concert. So I'm scrambling to do research. It's the middle of like late July, early August in Japan, like the hottest time of the year. That day, after accounting for humidity, it was like 110 degrees Fahrenheit, or like 42 Celsius. It was hot. Like, hot. <laughs> and after some Google searching, I figure out where the concert is, and I'm like, okay, I have to go over there. It'll take me 40 minutes to get there. The concert starts in 45 minutes. So I hop on trains, I, 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 do, I do all the necessary transfers, I, I get to Ueno Station. I'm like, okay, the concert is that way. That way. <laughs> and I'm just running, because I'm like, I can't be late. I, I have to be there, I have to see this. And I'm in jeans, because like, those are the only pants I brought. I'm not gonna wear shorts to a nice concert. And boy, I... <laughs> running in jeans during a Japanese summer when it is 110 degrees, was not a good idea. So I get to the venue. I ask, Eto, koko wa ocarina concerto desu ka? Like, is this the ocarina concert? And they respond, hi, hi, hi. Like, yeah, yeah, it is. So I buy my ticket. I'm, I'm seated there. And whew, I'm just like panting. I, I go to the bathroom to like wash my face and like everything. I have I, I do have deodorant wipes, which are a popular thing in Japan. So I, I like I like wipe myself down so I'm not like a disgusting hot piece of work. And the concert's amazing. Um, I approach the players who are who performed after the concert, and uh, they invite me to dinner. And as it turns out, um, one of the Italian players um, from the Gruppo Ocarinistico Budriese, uh, Fabio. Um, from the town where ocarinas were invented. <laughs> um, he speaks English, the other Italian player does not. And the Japanese players basically don't speak English. So 
I'm invited to dinner, and I have the unique opportunity to kind of be a translator at that dinner. So, I translate. It's an amazing time. And uh, I mentioned that I'm going to Korea in, like, a few days. And uh, Fabio, he tells me, oh, I I know some Korean Ocarina players. So Fabio introduces me to Mary Yu, her channel link to the description. And I meet her when I'm in Korea. Um, we have a great time. She actually takes me to see an Ocarina Museum in Seoul, which is amazing. I've never seen so many ocarinas in one place. And we also record a song together. <laughs> In the end, even though I wasn't able to see Sojiro on that trip, I got much more than I bargained for when it comes to ocarinas, and it was one of the best experiences of my entire life. But myself, and many of these people that I met, might never have had these ocarina opportunities if it weren't for Sojiro. So once again, thank you Sojiro. Alright, I would love to make more videos about ocarina history and like my own travel stories. So if you want more, please leave a like and let me know in the comments. It would mean the world to me. Thank you all for your continued support, subscribe for more, and keep on tootin'. <laughs> Bye!